Hello, my sexy muffins, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are doing part two of the Brahms Nanny one. I'm sorry it took a whole month to get to this. I did not expect to get sick, to be affected from my COVID booster, or from my flu shot, or to have severe seasonal depression. It's just been a lot. I will have to relook at the list of what I'm able to do in November and push some of the best stuff of the November of the spooky season list to January because I might not be able to do it all in such a short time now, which I am sorry about that. I, I know I suck. Anyways, I'm also sorry. I did not have a Halloween special because I was got on the 30th, got my booster shot and ended up not being able to pretty much do anything. I literally slept, slept for like 12 hours straight because I, I'm from like, midnight to 12 o'clock the next day because oh my goodness my body needed it because i was only in two to three hours of sleep at most a night for about two weeks and the booster shot for covid basically knocked me out which allowed me to get the sleep my body needed to recuperate anyways other than that long whole handful of stuff we are now we are now into the disclaimer disclaimer sorry brain fart Disclaimer, the boy is not a Yandere in canon, a.k.a. Brahms is not Yandere in canon. This is just for fun and not to be taken seriously at all. Simba for fictional characters and fictional Yandere's is fine. Just do not be illegal or gross about it. And remember to separate fiction from reality and head canon for canon. Also, Yandere's are not ideal partners to have in real life, obviously. And neither are anyone that does serial crimes like this. Anyways, let's do it. You woke up and started to do your daily routine. It has been about a week since the Hellshires left for their vacation. And you were now watching Brahms. Everything was going normal. You did follow the strict list that was left by Mrs. Hellshire about how to take care of Brahms. But things were starting to make you feel a little uneasy. For this whole week, you have felt like you have been watched. And it was driving you insane. And also, anytime Malcolm came over to uh, take care of things, you had very little to any time with him. It seems he was unnerved by something as well. And you didn't know what. Either way, you decided to move on and move past it. You were making dinner while Brom the doll sits and watch. But you were unaware of Brom's the real person watching it from the walls. You accidentally cut yourself and you hiss, blood dripping from your finger. You pick it up and put it in your mouth to suck on it to stop the bleeding, a force of habit you learned from as a child, and go to get the medical kit. You were unaware of this person coming out of the thing and watching you closely, just right behind you. You looked up and scream. I'm not going to scream because I'm not going to ruin people's hearing because, oh my God, I, I got so much hate last time. Anyways, you scream and thrash around, throw in the medical kit at the person behind you and run in. Of course, it did not end there. You were grabbed by the ankle. Uh, by You were tackled and grabbed by the ankle, being dragged away. You hit your head on the ground and everything goes black. You did not know what happened after that. The next thing you knew was you waking up in your bed, tucked in, and Brahms watching you. Someone was in the house with you. You panic and try to get up out of the bed, and you get a little ways, but then you hear the clink of a chain and almost trip. Someone has chained you to the bed. This was not good. You turn around and look around. No one was there. No one was here. No one was here and there was no one in the mansion except for you and you would have to wait for malcolm to come to the next day you cr fall to the floor pull your knees to your chest and cry and scream in anger and frustration and fear such incredible fear what is going on what is going to happen to you meanwhile brahms had patched up your finger which you haven't noticed or were not, and were not grateful for, he noted as he watched you. He needed you to tire yourself out so he could come out and speak to you, to show you that you were going to be his. He waits until you are calmed down enough, or at least worn out enough, before he comes out of the picture. Your head snaps up, and you look at him. 
you shake your head and try to get up, trying to get as far away as possible, but the chain only lets you get so far. Your name, he says in a soft voice. Do not scream. Who the hell are you? You demand and try to yank the chain more, not even able to pull the bed. It was so heavy. You were going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself, he says. Stop it. You freeze. The tone in his voice was deadly and serious. You stop and go still. What What do you want from me, you ask? I do not want anything from you except for your love. Your eyes widen and you shake your head venomously. No, I will not give you my love. I don't even know who you are. Oh, but you will. Now go to bed and I will make you something to eat, he says and walks out walks back into the portrait closing it you had no choice you were chained now and you had no freaking choice you climb back into bed and cross your arms over your chest angry your cell phone was not in reach and neither was the telephone there was no one you could way you could call for anyone for help you try you taking off your shirt and throwing it and making it into a rope and throwing it to bring the phone closer but it was too short you growled and threw it to the side angrily. This cannot be happening. This cannot be. Brahms was making you a nice sandwich of choice and was making it as best he could. He would have to get some meals prepped with Malcolm. Malcolm knew better from last time than to risk telling anyone about him. So Malcolm will do as told. He then brings up the, your favorite sandwich and sets it in front of you. You glare at him, but you were so hungry. Your stomach growls in protest of you wanting to not eat the food, and you slowly ate the food. Brahm watches you behind the mask on his face, watching you intently as you do. You glare at him. Why are you freaking staring? You took off your shirt, he says, and you realize you were shirtless in front of this man that wanted your love. Your face grows hot and heated, and you cross your arms over your chest. Don't look, you tell him angrily, a bit perturbed that he wanted to look at you so blatantly. He continued to stare and didn't say nothing. You slowly finish your sandwich, now very self-conscious of your slight nudity. Being just shirtless as a man was not a big deal, but it was obviously making him uh, very much interested in you. Once that was done, he takes away the tray Make sure you drinks and make sure you drinks all the rest of the water, and then you start to feel dizzy. Frick! He puts something in the drink. You fall back into the pillows and your eyes drift shut. The last thing you see is Brahms, Brahms Hellshire above you. That's who you realize this was. This was Brahms Hellshire, and when the uh, they asked you to watch him, they were asking you to watch and take care of the real Brahms, the man inside the walls. Your eyes fall shut and you fall into a dreamless sleep. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed that. I wanted to get right into the action and kidnapping stuff. So that is what we did and all that stuff. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed. If you would like to see more, comment below what you would like to see. If there's anything you want to see in this miniseries of Brahms, Hellshire, X male listener and all that stuff. Yes, do it. Comment it and I will do my best to add it. And I hope that you all enjoyed this. If you And when you want to see more, you know what to do. If you want to see part three, comment part three, and I will do it the best of my abilities. And I hope that you all enjoyed, and stay sexy. Oh, wait, Patreon outro. Patreon outro. Thank you, Gav, for being my first patron and being in the Queen King's Majesty here. You are wonderful, fabulous, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Thank you, Gav, and thank you, Wicked Brony. For being my second patron, you are also wonderful, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Thank you, Wicked Brony. I appreciate you as well. Thank you, both of you. I love you and thank you. And I hope that you all enjoyed. Stay sexy, all my sexy muffins. Bye bye. Secret after time, secret after time, secret, 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 secret after time. Um, secret outro, secret outro, secret outro of a baseball bat. Anyways, the secret outro of today is if you were in this situation, would you have uh, attacked, uh, would you have fought Brahms in this situation of this chapter, 
or would have you tried to run? I am personally a runner, so I would have tried to run. Or would you have freezed up and then get snatched up? I would freeze most likely, but I would want to run because I would not want to fight because oof, he is big. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed and stay sexy on my sexy muffins. Bye-bye.